God is good. And all the time. Oh, I thank God and I thank you, Pastor Josh and Pastor Shirley, for giving me the opportunity to come back to DECC to share the Word of God. Wow, I miss you all. Hallelujah. I think the last time I came is about two years ago. Hallelujah. But for those that do not know me, my name actually is Agus Gunawan. Yeah, I'm Indonesian Chinese. Yeah, but you can call me Han Han, easier. Han Han, like that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But before I preach, I want to give you a warning. You know that my English is not good. Yeah, but my Jesus is very, very good. Yeah. And I remember uh, Pastor Shirley said, I'm a doctor. No, no, no. My PhD, yeah. Even though I have a PhD degree, I always say my PhD is preaching, healing, and deliverance. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. So my English is not good because I studied my master from Edith Cowan University long, long time ago, 27 years ago, maybe. Hallelujah. When I graduated, yeah. Um, I remember every time I launched my paper, yeah, my professor always give me mark, you know, it's just for me to pass as an international student because my professor will say, you are using English as a language but using Indonesian grammar. <laughs> Therefore, I give you a warning. So you have to open your heart, hallelujah, because you are going to listen to the broken English, English as a language with the Indonesian grammar, yeah? yeah. But even though it's broken, it's always anointed by God to heal the broken heart people in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I will not preach long. Now already 11.23. Pastor Shirley, how long do I have? Is it one hour? Okay, hallelujah. One hour, hallelujah. I thought I want to preach about five to six hours. But anyway, one hour, I, I, I will use the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. And today, this morning, I want to preach and I want to give a title of my message, Art of God versus Dagon. Okay, let me repeat again. Art of God or the Art of Covenant versus Dagon. So some of you will not know who is Dagon and who is Ark of the Covenant. Let us open our Bible. I want to invite you to open a 1 Samuel chapter 5. 1 Samuel chapter 5, I'm reading verse 1 to verse 12. Okay, there are 12 verses. I want you to concentrate, open your heart, hallelujah, so you can receive the word of the Lord. I'm going to read from New International Version. After the Philistine had captured the ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then they carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and his hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. On his body, only his body remained. That is why to this day, neither the priest of Dagon nor any others who entered Dagon's temple at Ashdod stepped on the threshold. The Lord's hand was heavy on the people of Ashdod and its vicinity. He brought devastation on them and afflicted them with tumors. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, The ark of God of Israel must not stay here with us. Because his hand is heavy on us and on Dagon our God. So they call together all the rulers of the Philistine and ask them, What shall we do with the ark of God of Israel? They answered, Have the ark of God of Israel moved to God? So they moved the ark of God of Israel. But after they had moved it, the Lord's hand was against that city. 
throwing it into a great panic. He afflicted the people of the city, both young and old, with an outbreak of tumors. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. As the ark of God was entering Ekron, the people of Ekron cry out, they have brought the ark of God of Israel around us to kill us and our people. So they called together all the rulers of the Philistine and said, send the ark of God of Israel away. Let it go back to its own place or it will kill us and our people. For death have filled the city with panic. God's hand was very heavy on it. Those who did not die were afflicted with tumors and the outcry of the city went up to heaven. Amen and amen. My brother and my sister, the act of God versus Dagon. Oh, I want to give you only three simple points this morning. Number one, I want to remind you, my friend, my brother, my sister, destiny, destiny empowered Christian church, there is great power in the presence of God. If you believe, say amen. Once again, I want to say there is a great power in the presence presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe, put your right hand in your heart and say, I believe, I believe. there is great power, great power in the presence of God. Presence of God. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Why I said the presence of God? Because the ark of God actually is the symbol of the presence of God himself. Some of you maybe do not know what is like, uh, so what is the picture of Ark of the Covenant? This is the photo of the Ark of the Covenant. Sister Inongi, hallelujah, thank you, hallelujah. It's a wooden box covered with coal, hallelujah, carried by at least four people. And then on top of them, there is a, a two cherubim, two angels that are worshipped. And on the middle, hallelujah, there the presence of God, hallelujah. This is called the ark of God, hallelujah. Some of you maybe ask, Pastor, what is inside of the ark of God? There are three things that are contained inside of the uh, ark of the covenant, hallelujah. There are three things there. Number one, the Bible said, hallelujah, the gold jar of manna. That is the gold jar of manna. Number two is Aaron's staff that had budded. That's the staff of Aaron. Hallelujah. And then number three is the stone tablet of the covenant. Hallelujah. Do you know, many people ask me, Pastor, why in the symbol of the power of the presence of God, there must be a gold jar of manna there. I believe that the Lord wants to remind you and remind me. In his presence, there is a proficiency of God. That is why God put manna in it. Hallelujah. Oh, for 40 years, they were at the wilderness. Oh, no food. Every single morning, hallelujah, the Lord rained down a bread. And the people call that bread manna. The color is white, like coriander seed. It's tasted like waffles made with honey. Oh, hallelujah. It's perfect, my brother and my sister. Every day they can eat that. Hallelujah. So I want to decree and I want to declare to all of you, if you come to the presence of God, hallelujah, there is no lack. God will supply all your needs according to His riches and honor in Christ Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 19, if you believe, everybody say amen and give God a clap offering. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! There is a provision. If you're talking about power, the Lord can supply. The Lord can provide. And furthermore, if you're talking about manna at that time, at that time, at that time, Moses told the people of Israel, you only can take uh, one portion for a day. Unfortunately, some of, of them very big, like Brother Sean, very big, hallelujah. <laughs> and then take a lot of manna, hallelujah, and bring it home and cannot finish it that night, right? And then the next morning, the Bible said that manna become full of maggots, yeah. right? And began to smell. Because it's only can eat for that single day that is why our lord jesus said our prayer give us our daily 
bread. Every day God will provide us with the fresh manna. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, the secret. Hallelujah. That manna that put in the gold jar and then put it in the presence of God for how many years? So, 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 so many years. It always fresh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give God a clap offering. There is power in the presence of God. Because when God comes down, the heaven comes down and makes fresh. Hallelujah. You do not need to go to Mecca to make your skin fresh. <laughs> when you have the presence of God, you will look fresh every single day. Hallelujah. And the second thing is there is a staff of Aaron. You know the staff is taken from the tree. It's dead. There is no life in it. But you know the story? When that staff put it in the presence of God, in front of the Ark of the Covenant, suddenly something that is dead become alive and then sprouted, then budded, blossomed and produced almond. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah, that's awesome. That is why the Lord told Moses, put that staff. That there is not in the ground, but it can still alive as long as in the presence of God, always alive. Amen. If you want to produce fruit in your life, how many of you want to produce fruit? You and I need to dwell in the presence of God more and more and more. Hallelujah. Not only that, the third thing is the stone of tablet. Can you imagine the Lord with his finger wrote on the tablet of the stone? Hallelujah. Yeah. Who why is put in there? Hallelujah. And I remember a lot of a lot of my members come to me and say, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. Oh, I cannot win my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my boss, my wife, my husband, my children. Oh, their heart is so stony, like stone, you know, like stone. They cannot change. They cannot repent. They cannot receive Jesus. Their mind is like stone, you know, like a stone, very hard. Cannot change, cannot change. I want to tell you, hallelujah, just bring them in the presence of God. And God can write His commandment and His word in the stony heart. If you believe, say amen. Come on, give God a clap offering. Oh, hallelujah. There is power in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I have to be quick. Hallelujah. Fasten your seatbelt. This box is representing the power of his presence. That is why when Joshua became the leader of Israel, Joshua needed to cross the Jordan River. Hallelujah. Sister Inongi, this is a Jordan River. Look, I've been to Israel more than 15 times. And pray for me. Hallelujah. This December, I'm going again. Hallelujah. And, and this is the, 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 the map of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Joshua need to cross the Jordan River. Can you imagine 2.5 million Jews? They cannot swim. They do not know how to build a boat. Hallelujah. And the river of Jordan is so huge, flooded. You know, some commentary is saying the speed of the wave of the river is 40 miles per hour. We Australians say 65 kilometers per hour. That's the speed of the wave. And the wave that the Israel need to cross is 1.6 kilometer wide. And then the depth is 0 0.9 meter until 12 meter deep. How you cross the Jordan River, it's impossible. Then the Lord told Joshua, 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 Joshua. Just get the, the seven priests. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then get all the priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. And then when they carry the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible said the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, the feet touch the river, the water, and the Jordan River parted. Yeah. And 2.5 million cross and walk onto dry land. That is the power of the presence of God. That is why if you look Joshua chapter 3, Joshua chapter 4, it's always say the ark, the ark, the ark, the ark, cross the Jordan River. Many of you right now, including maybe myself, we face oh, 
called Jordan River. We cannot enter the promised land. We cannot enter the land that full of milk and honey. I want to tell you, if you carry the Ark of the Covenant, if you have the presence of God, God can open doors in front of you. Everybody say Amen. Come on, give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the power of the presence of God. Not only that, and Joshua need to face the first city of the promised land, Jericho. Oh, how you conquer Jericho? It is impossible. Because Jericho, did you know that Jericho has a double wall? This is the picture of the ancient Jericho. Double wall. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Sister Inongi. Hallelujah. I continue. How many of you have been to China? How many of you have been to China? You, you see the, the greatest wall of China? Yeah? The only structure that you can watch from the moon. But the wall of China, only single wall. It's easy to conquer. Why? Because they bribe the people who 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 standing on the door. The security guard on the door and then the country was defeated. But if you have double door, how you conquer it? You pass the first wall, you got another sniper from the second wall. It is impossible to defeat the double wall of Jericho. I give you uh, some measurement, okay, Sister Inonge, uh, another, now, this is the measurement, okay, the Israelites is on this side, okay, hallelujah, can you imagine the first wall is about, you see that, about 7 meter high, about 1.83 meters thick, and then another about 4.5 meter, and then the, the last wall is about 9 meter high, and then 3.66 meters meter depth, it is impossible to destroy the Jericho walls. Hallelujah. So how to destroy the Jericho wall? Once again, the Lord told Joshua, 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 <laughs> get the priest. Lift up the cup of the covenant. You praise me. You worship me. Like Pastor Prince singing, oh, I will praise uh, bring down the wall of Jericho. Oh, when the ark of God circled the Jericho for one time. And then the next day, the ark of God, circle the second day. Not the Israelites who circling the Jericho. No, 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 no. It's the Ark of the Covenant. Read the Bible carefully. The Ark circling the Jericho. The last day for seven times and the wall come down. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is the problem in your life? The Goliath, the wall, double wall, pastor. It is impossible for me to conquer. It is impossible, doesn't make sense, Pastor. It's too big for yours. Yes, you cannot do it. Only the presence of God can do it. You and I need to carry the presence of God. That is why it took 56 years for Joshua to conquer 31 countries in the land of Canaan. Why Joshua has the victory? Every time Joshua go to war, Joshua always carry the ark. Of the covenant there is power in the presence of God amen amen, amen, amen and amen. amen but pastor if you say there is a power in the presence of God how come the Philistine had captured the ark of God pastor if you are saying there is power in the presence of God how can the Lord Allow the Philistine, which is the enemy of Israel, capture the ark of God and they took it from Ebenezer to Asdod. Can you imagine Ebenezer? Ebenezer, the meaning is the stone of hell. Ebenezer is the meaning is until today the Lord has helped us. Right? We keep praying, Ebenezer, oh, until today the Lord help us. Can you imagine the Philistine had captured the Ark of God, took it from Ebenezer to Asdod? How, Pastor? Look, my point number two is very important. 300 years later, after Joshua conquered the whole canon, this story that we read has happened. It's not because the ark doesn't have a power. It's not because the ark lose the power. Because 
the people of Israel, they look down on the presence of God. So that is my point number two. Do not pray on the presence of God. Do not look down. Do not make fun of His presence. Do not ignore. Oh, do not take it for granted. Do not take it easy, the presence of God. Every time you come to the presence of God, let us respect Him, honor Him, reverence His presence with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind, with everything that we have. Lord, I respect you, I honor you. Come to his presence with tremble. Come to his presence honoring him. Amen. Hallelujah. Not because the presence of God lost its power. Because at that time, you have to understand the Israelites were led by the priest, the pastor. His name is Eli. And he has two sons called Hophni and Pinehas. The Bible say Eli's son was crowned They had no regard of the Lord. Yeah. The other translation said they are worthless. They are dishonorable. They are unprincipled. They had no respect for the Lord. So there is a church that time. People worship the Lord. People bring, bring offering. And then Hophni and Pina sent his servant. You just picked up the offering. But the people said, no, 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 cannot. We have to burn it. Said, I want to take it by force. Yeah. And they took yeah. the offering by force. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh, my brother and my sister. Oh, that happened in the house of God. Not only that. The sin of the young man was very great in the Lord's sight. For they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. And now Eli was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the woman who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The Bible doesn't say they slept with the prostitute. No, no, no. no. With the woman who served. So if I took it to 2023 now, they are sleeping together. They have a free sex relationship. With all the people who are serving in, 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 in the tent in front of the Ark of the Covenant. They do not respect. They do not keep the holiness. They do not have integrity. They perform sin in the eyes of God. That is why I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, we need to respect the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now come here. Not only in that box. Here. Let us respect our body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then 20 chapters. Sorry. Two chapters later. The Philistine deployed their forces to meet Israel. And as battle spread, Israel was defeated by Philistine who killed about 4,000 of them on the battlefield. Can you imagine? They lost 4,000 people. And then when the soldier returned to the camp, the elders of Israel asked, why did the Lord bring defeat on us today before the Philistine? Where is God? I've been praying. I've been fasting. I serve God in the midst or in the middle of the tent. Look, if you don't have a holiness of God, you don't respect God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen to me, young people. You know, next year in the year of, uh, in the celebration of the Valentine, I told all my members, you know, that we need to have a vow of purity. Yeah. Every people that before marriage, you vow to give a gift of virginity for your husband and your wife. And then if you already married, you vow to give a vow of purity for your husband and your wife. Right? Hallelujah. We need to have that kind of, we need to follow the scriptures. We need to obey the word of God. It's not because God doesn't want to help us. And sometimes it's because us, we don't respect him. Look, I believe with my all 
all my heart. I have seen miracles of miracles, the presence of God. When the Lord comes down, you know, provision will come, manna will come, the power that make you fresh, and then all the things that are dead suddenly become alive. Miracle, two more disappear, and then people change their heart. It's filled by the word of God. And then the closed door is open, the wall come down, and then the Lord presence will take us to the land of the the promised land that full of milk and honey. Yes, I believe that with my heart. Amen. But sometimes we need to introspect our heart. Amen. Why it doesn't happen. Yeah. Maybe we don't respect him. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Philistine. Come back to the story. The Israel said like this, let us bring the ark of the Lord's covenant from Silo so that, they, so that he may go with us and save us from the hand of our enemies. So the people sent men to Silo and they brought back the ark of covenant of the Lord Almighty who is enthroned between the cherubim. Wow, hallelujah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the Eli's son, Hophni and Pinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Lord Covenant come into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout that the ground shook. You know why? Because everybody knows the moment the Ark of Covenant comes, miracle will happen. Will happen. Because when the Ark of the Covenant move, every nation in Canaan all destroyed. Yeah. 31 of them destroyed. Even Jordan River parted afraid with the Ark of the Covenant. Even the double wall of Jericho afraid with the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. Hearing the uproar, the Philistine asked, what's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learn, this is the enemy, okay? The enemy speaking. When they learned that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistine were afraid. A God has come into the camp. They said, oh no, oh no, oh no. We, we are going to die. Nothing like this has happened before. We are doomed. We are going to die. Who is going to deliver us from the hand of this mighty God? They are the gods who struck the Egyptian with all the kinds of plagues in the wilderness. Look, all the enemies understood. Yeah. All the enemies believed yeah. the power of God struck down Egyptian. Yeah. Right? They yeah. believe. If you don't believe, come on, my brother and my sister. The enemy believe. They do. We are going to die. And then, and then something happened in the camp of the enemy. Let me repeat again. Something happened in the camp of the Philistine. They said like this, Be strong, Philistine. Be man. Act like man. Or you will be subject to the Hebrew as they have been to you. Be man and fight. Act like man and fight. Look, when I read that scriptures, I was shocked. You know, I've been a pastor like, I don't know how many, 30 plus years. You know, I, I, can't, I can't believe it. You know, when I read that scriptures, because every single Father's Day, I will preach to the man. And my favorite topic to preach to the man is act like man. Hallelujah. I thought that is come from the first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Because Apostle Paul said to his church in Corinthians, act like mature men, act like men. Then I realized it's not originated from Paul. I thought Apostle Paul, when he wrote first Corinthians 16, 13, act like men, is copy of what a King David said in first King chapter 2, verse 2. Right, Because King David, before he died, when he wants to ordain his son Solomon to become king, the last word of King David to Solomon is, act like man. So that means, my brother and my sister, you can be a man, but you don't like as a man. You can be 
a husband but you don't act like a husband. You can be a father but you don't act like a father or act like man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and I think I, I want to stop here. Is it okay, Pastor Shirley, to going? Okay, because I know I can get persecuted if I keep saying. It's okay. Especially about act like men. Okay? It's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, as an Indonesian Chinese, okay, I cannot understand the Western world, including our country, Australia. Look, act like men is very important message now. Especially today, because what I know last year, the government of America, including I think Australia and all the Europe, European, they endorsed 72 gender in the year of 2022. And this year, 2023, they endorsed 112 gender. Can you imagine within a year, they increased 40 types of gender? I check. Oh, I was in Facebook here, so I have to be careful with my words. But but I I am a pastor, so I have to say it to you. I don't care if you say 112 gender. The Bible said in the beginning God created whom human in the likeness of Him in the image of Him. Therefore, God created man and a woman. Only two gender in this world. If you believe, say Amen. Hallelujah. Do you agree with me? Yes. So be like men, act like men, especially men in this place. You cannot change your gender, I'm sorry. Even though in America, Biden administration right now allowing from five years old to transition, change operation, change gender. No, 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 you cannot change your gender. Hello? Look, look, look. Last July, just a few months ago, 23rd of July, 2023, I'm very proud with the committee of the beauty pageant of Miss Italy. How many of you from Italy? No, you're not here. I'm proud. Yeah? Because, because this, this oh, sister in Hungary, there's a news there, okay? Ah, see? Miss Italy beauty pageant bans transgender women from competing. Saying contestant must be woman from birth. This news is 23rd of July, 2023, just a few months ago. Now October, right? September, August, July. But unfortunately, they are the only country who participate in the franchise of Miss Universe who dare to talk that the competition of the beauty pageant must be woman from birth. Not my country. Indonesia doesn't say anything. Not Australia. Australia doesn't say anything. America doesn't say anything. They just keep quiet. Why the Miss Italy said like this? Because two weeks before, two weeks before, which is the 10th of July, did you know that Miss Netherlands yeah, is the first trans woman that won the beauty pageant in Netherlands? No, no, the first trans woman. What is trans woman? Is the biological male. Wonder beauty pageant. Oh my God. Oh Jesus Christ. We live in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah now. And I cannot understand my brother and my sister that someone, a man before, a man before confused, you know, I do not know whether I am born like a man or a woman and then, and then change the sex, become a woman and then go to contest beauty pageant and won. And she, he or she, I, I don't know how, how to call it again, okay, hallelujah. And, and, and the, the, the Netherlands, the Miss Netherlands is going to represent Netherlands for the Miss Universe. I don't know whether she or he will want the Miss Universe. Hello? Only Miss Italia dare to make a statement. You must be born as a woman. After that, more than 100 trans men signed up for Miss Italy beauty pageant as, as protest. 100 trans men. Huh? See? Hello? <laughs> that is why when the International uh, Women of Courage Award in the International Women's Day in the 8th of March 2023 just uh, uh, six months ago, 
the first lady of the United States of America, Jill Biden, give biological male woman of courage award. Sometimes I don't understand this thing can happen in my lifetime, my brother and my sister. I watch the news and then there is a male compete in the swimming and then he keep losing, okay? And then he confused, he, he wanna change, become a woman, you know? After two years, he become a woman with the long hair and then compete swimming in the woman's class. Of course he won. I don't understand. In Canada, I heard another man also compete, you know, lift up uh, the heavy, heavy stuff, you know, and then he kept loss, losing. And then after, after that, he confused, changed the gender, become a woman. Now he declare I'm a woman, and then he compete, you know, in the woman class. Of course he won. He is a biological male. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be man. Hallelujah. Act like man. Look, if you read uh, Genesis chapter 9, you, you, you and I know. I know I'm going to get in trouble with this, okay? But, but I think uh, Holy Spirit, uh, I have to tell you. Is it okay, Pastor Shirley? Genesis chapter 9 is saying, hallelujah. You know, after Noah come out from the ark, right? And then the Lord said, what? I will not punish you. Punish the hum human kind. I make a covenant with you, Noah, and all the humans. I will not destroy the earth with the big flood. And then he put the rainbow. Yeah. Hallelujah. The rainbow. Now that symbol of the rainbow, they said as a pride flag. Yeah, no. It's okay. There's no God. We can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. Rainbow. <laughs> pride. In America, they put that, that rainbow flags above the American flag. In this country, I just came back from Sydney, right? If you go to Sydney airport, you go to Mascot, you want to stay in the Ibis Hotel, Pullman Hotel, you will see Australian flag, you will see Aboriginal flag, and then you will see the pride flag, the rainbow flag, same level. In the council building, hallelujah. Anyway, anyway, I have to come back to my preaching, <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Respect. The Holy Spirit, respect the presence of God. Let me continue, okay? So when the enemy understood the principle, be like man, act like man, and fight. So the Philistines fought, and the Israelites were defeated, and every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was very great. Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers, and the ark of God was captured and Eli, two son Hophni and Pinehas dead. My brother and my sister, it's not because the ark or the presence of God lost its power. Because many times of us, we do not respect the Holy Spirit. We say, oh, it's okay, la. the Lord will not punish us. Uh, it's okay, we do sin. It's okay, we do not follow. It's okay, you do not need to pray. You do not need to fast. You do not, do not need to come to church. It's okay. Oh, you, look, my brother and my sister. Look what happened. The power is still there, and the Lord proved to the people of Israel without knowing, without no one doing anything, the hands of God punish yeah. the Philistine yeah. until they have to return the Ark of Covenant, yeah. right? Yeah. With all the gold and everything. Yeah. They return it to where? To Beth Shemesh. And the people in Beth Shemesh, they're so happy. Oh, the Ark of Covenant come back. Oh, they start to worship. They start to offer the sacrifice. Unfortunately, 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 God struck down some of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they look into the Ark of the Lord. The people mourn because of the heavy blow of the Lord had dealt them. Look, the Israelites... You cannot touch, you cannot play, you cannot make fun of the presence of God. The 70 young men, oh, the ark now come back. Oh, so powerful. So powerful, the ark of covenant. Oh, all Ashdod, oh, destroyed. Akron, Philistine, destroyed. God, destroyed. Oh, that's powerful. They want to look. <laughs> because they said that there's a culture of mana. 
I thought the mana, I think the mana already full of maggot and all the worm. I don't think there's fresh. Oh, I don't believe there's a hand of God can wrote in the in the tablet of stone. Oh, do you think that the, the stick oh, can can keep alive, butter and produce? Oh, they they wanna <laughs> they wanna open, died seventy of them. So teach you and teach me, my brother and my sister. Don't play with the presence of God. That happened in 1070 BC. 70 years later, even King David did not understand the principle. Because 70 years later, Uzzah stretched out his hand and took hold of the ark of God. And he died beside the ark of God. Hallelujah. Look, the presence of God, we, we need to... You know, I believe of the teaching of grace. Yes, grace. God is awesome. God is great. God is full of love. But at the same time, we have to come with the fear of God. Amen. We need to worship Him truly that come from our heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Few months ago, I was so shocked, my brother and my sister. <laughs> Because in the Gelora Bung Karno, which is the biggest stadium in Jakarta, is viral, okay? Because there are four skinny girls from Korea, they name themselves Blackpink, has a concert in Jakarta. I don't know about Blackpink before, my brother. How many of you know Blackpink? You don't know here. You don't, you don't follow the Korean, Korean thing, you know? Um, Indonesian is so much on the Korean singing, you know, uh, and they pay $300, roughly Australian dollar, just to sit in that stadium very far away. And then that group came to Sydney, and the cheapest ticket is $700, and I've been told many, many people go to that stadium and watch the concert. You know, the sound system is so good, the musician is so good, they told me, and then the whole stadium become ping in Sydney, because black ping, right? You know, uh, I said, what is the, the, what is the make ping? And then they said, look, pastor, you, they bought the material of the concept. You know, the hammer that can glow in the dark. The color is pink. is $80 to $150. And the people buy. And I cannot understand. In the big concert, you know, they all jumping. Oh, oh, oh. They can sing even in Korean. You know. They can sing, they can memorize the words in Korean, in English. Sometimes they lift up their hands and then in the concert and then they cry. I don't understand how you cry to Blackpink that, that don't die for you. <laughs> and then they cry. You know? And then I look at them, they're, they're all old, old guy like me, you know. And all jumping, jumping. And I told the people, I cannot understand that. People stay in the stadium from morning just to enter the stadium. They do the camping outside, right? So they can sit as, uh, no, they can stand as close as possible to the celebrity who is singing. And then when you come to church, you come late. <laughs> you come free of charge. You don't pay $700, right? You come late. You, you, no, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about someone else, you know. This is good. The worship is good with Sister Inonge. It's good, you know. People come to church very late and then they sing, I raise a hallelujah. Pastor Prince make mistakes. Hey, where's my coffee? You know, version. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your hand. Many of us is like that. You know, during the COVID, COVID time when the church is closed, our church in Sydney is closed 10 months, you know, and then six months is on the four square meter and two square meter based on Australian law, right? So, you know, you know, our online service is very good. Do you know some of the people I watch, they worship God. With their pajamas at home, online. How many people online now? Oh, there are some people online. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, people just worship God. It's like, take it easy, make play on it. 
I raise a hallelujah coffee with the with the pillow sleeping. Are you worshiping God? Yes, I worship God. Where? In my bedroom. <laughs> hallelujah. Look, my brother and my sister. Hallelujah. This is just for some warning to you and to me. Look, this year I celebrated 25 years of my wedding anniversary, 21st of March. My marriage is still strong, hallelujah. But look, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right? Hallelujah. Yeah, my wife cannot come because she is translating for Pastor Bin Nguyen in, in Wells School. Anyway, um, look, if I have time to travel, if God allow me to do time travel, okay, to come back 25 years ago when I was before marriage. Do you think what, what I will say to myself? Oh God, if really there is a time travel God, hallelujah, and, and you give me the opportunity to come back to meet myself 25 years ago. Oh, I know what should I tell myself. <laughs> hallelujah. And then I come 25 years ago. Boom, Han Han, meet me. Who are you? I'm Han Han again. I'm you, 25 years. I come from the future. And Han Han, you have to understand, I come from the future to give you one simple message, the key to success. Because I already experienced 25 years. Oh yeah, please tell me, tell me how to become a success. And I will tell myself, Han Han, look, I come 25 years from the future. You are still young, okay? Please, be diligent. To use your hair tonic. Otherwise, 25 years later, see? <laughs> no, no, no. I will not say like that. <laughs> Look, I will not say like that. But if I got time to tell my younger self, I will tell myself, Han Han, don't make fun of the presence of God. Respect the Holy Spirit more and more. Make Him number one in your life. Make Him number one in your finance. Respect Him. Make Him number one in your family. Then all these things shall be added to you. Come on, everybody say Amen. amen. Give God a clap offering. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The last point that I want to say is this. Dagon... And the ark of God cannot be at the same place. And the third point, I want to do a drama. Is it okay? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Prince, can you come to the front, please? Hallelujah. I need four young men as a volunteers to perform this drama. Hallelujah. Can, can, can four of you to come, please, to the front? Hallelujah. Young men, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Hey. One more, two. One, two, hey. three. Hey. And then... Brother Sean, oh, oh, you, oh, it's a, a lot. I need, yeah, I need, hey, five is okay. Come, come. Okay, hallelujah. Okay. Can, 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 can you sit down first, hallelujah? Before I do the drama, I have to introduce to you Dagon first, right? Many of us do not know who is Dagon, right? Hallelujah. Dagon is this, uh, sister, the picture's number one, Dagon. Dagon is the gods of Philistines. Where is my Dagon? Dagon? Hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Nah, that's right. Yeah. Dagon is the, the highest ranking of gods during that time. Hallelujah. Dagon is half man and half fish. They worship this God. Why? Because this God control the harvest control, the rain control, the waters control, everything. And you have to understand, Dagon is the father of Baal. You know, the king Ahab and the Isabel has a 450 Baal prophet. Baal has a father, which is Dagon. Some of you will think, oh, pastor, I don't worship Dagon. Dagon is no longer exist in this time. No, 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 no. Half man, yeah. half fish. Yeah. In 2023, it's like this maybe. Sister Inongi, ah, like that. Okay. Yeah, half man, half fish. Okay, An another one, another one, the decoration, another one. Okay, see, you see the Marvel movie, you know, the superheroes movie. Yeah, that's, that's Dagon, okay? Okay, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Can I have, uh, Brother Prince, can, can, can you become uh, Dagon? 
Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Can you, brother, what's your name? Brett, can you come? Can you become the ark of God? Oh, now we're yeah. talking. Yeah, you're not talking, okay? It's okay. I, I know Pastor Prince since he, since he was very young before marriage, so so I can I can do whatever I, I can, right? It's okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, okay, can, can you all, the, the boys, go over there? Go over there, go over there. No, 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 you are still here. Okay. <laughs> take, take, help me take two, two chairs, please. Pastor Prince, I want you to, to stand on this. Yeah, two, two chairs. You stand over there. Yeah, I want you to stand over there. Yes. Okay, hallelujah. Look, they're gone. Why I'm asking Pastor Prince to standing on the chair? Because when they worship their gods, it always must be on the top, must be higher. Every time you go to the temple, you know, I travel to many countries. You know, I go, I've been to temple of Zeus, temple of Hercule, you know, they always put it in the higher place, right? So high place, Dagon, okay, higher. They worship Dagon. And then the Bible say when they captured the ark of God, why God did not kill all the Philistines, because the enemy want to worship the Ark of God. Can you three of you carry this, this Ark of Covenant? At least four people, come, come, come here, come here, hallelujah. At least four people, you're two in the back, two in the front. Let's say we carry, no, 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 we, can, no, no, we, we carry like this. No, no, not like that, just, just like a drama, okay? No, like a drama, we go, we carry, we carry the Ark of the Covenant, and then the Bible said, they put it, Okay, let me re repeat again. They carried the ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. No, 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 you have to stand, stand. Stand, stand, stand. Stand on the, on the chair, yeah. Okay, they set it beside Dagon. Hallelujah. Why they set beside Dagon? Because they all want to come, come, come and worship. Come, come, come. No, 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 you worship. Okay, okay. Come down, come down. Because they want to what? worship. The problem is, the problem is, they want to worship Dagon. At the same time, they want to worship the Ark of, of God. Right? Hallelujah. Okay, after they worship, okay, you go. Let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. Okay, let me continue. This, this is good. Oh, this is good. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, this is good. When the people of Asgod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, my brother and my sister, hallelujah, that we serve an awesome God. His name is Jesus. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And no one above Him because He is number one. Dagon shall bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me declare every sickness has to bow down in front of the ark of God. Hallelujah. So, so do you think, oh, pastor, a lot of power of darkness, a lot of a power of Satan, a lot of power. Look, the all power must bow down in the... F Hallelujah. Sebab Kristus Yesus yang, yang pada, yang memiliki kesetaraan dengan Allah, tidak menganggap kesetaraan dengan Allah sebagai milik yang harus dipertahankan. Melainkan telah mengosongkan dirinya dan telah mengambil rupa seorang hamba dan taat sampai mati. Bahkan mati di atas kayu salib. Itu sebabnya Allah memberikan kepadanya nama di atas segala nama. Supaya setiap lutut akan bertelut lidah akan mengaku Yesus Kristus adalah Tuhan bagi kemuliaan Allah Bapa. Haleluya. Amen. Amen. Haleluya. For those that do not have the gift of the interpretation of the tongue. Let me repeat. Hallelujah. No, come on, come on. You cannot, you cannot move. Hallelujah. Look, 
Dagon cannot move. Why? Because the Bible said Dagon is made from the stone, made from the wood. The Bible said that God cannot see, that God cannot hear, that God cannot eat, that God cannot smell. Deuteronomy 428. This God cannot help you. This God cannot touch you. This God cannot answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For those that do not have the gift interpretation of the tongue let me translate to you Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself and become obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth of those on the under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father everybody say amen hallelujah so every name shall bow hallelujah every knee shall bow I do not know every Sickness, there is a name. Have a cancer, stomach cancer, lymphoma, whatever, must bow. Every tumor, there is a name, must bow hallelujah every weaknesses must bow every bankruptcy must bow hallelujah amen amen praise the lord praise the lord let me continue hallelujah okay hallelujah the problem is the problem is they took Dagon and put him back in his place friends all soldiers they took Dagon and put him put him yeah put him in his place okay hallelujah and then worship hey watch don't forget to worship worship again and worship again look this is the problem if I become this three guys of Philistines I knew that this guy hey, this God cannot help me yeah. why you need to bring him up again and worship him again thank you brother thank you brother hallelujah but that's that most of us is like that my brother my sister we have Dagon in our life I do not know who is Dagon in your in your life maybe K-pop K-drama smoking cigarette i don't know what's 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 your mistresses your affairs the things that the lord is keep saying no cannot you must kick them out look if if i'm philistines i will kick this god out but they keep putting him back up that is why there's no power in our life because sometimes we need to get rid of dagon and i do not know what's dagon in your life Hallelujah. Maybe pornography, maybe drugs, maybe. I, I don't know. Hallelujah. Let me read again. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon fall on his face on the ground before the ark of God. His head and his hand has been broken off and were lying on the threshold. <laughs> Only his body. <laughs> Only his body remains. <laughs> this one, you cannot, you cannot uh, make a drama because your head and your hands are all, right? Hallelujah. Can I have uh, Sister Inongi to come? You, you know? But unfortunately, even though the dragon, the head already spread out like that, that's the pictures there. That's, that's the picture is wrong because the pictures is worship the Ark of the Covenant, but I cannot find the picture dragon without the head. And without the hand, because the hand, the two hands is stretched out of the, the door on the other side and the head is very far. The problem is, the problem is, look, three of you, you need to get the Dagon's head outside. You get the, the hand of the Dagon outside and you get the Dagon uh, leg outside because all the hand, all the leg, you, you go out, right? Go, 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 go. After you find the leg, after you find the head, after you find the hands. This is the problem. They come back with the hand and they come back with the leg. They come back and then they fix this. They're gone. 
Hey, three of you, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> come, 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 come. Come, come. The problem is after that happened, they bring the head, they bring, and then they fix this God. They put it back, right? They put it back, yeah, and then you lift, lift, lift the dragon because dragon cannot move, right? And then dragon put it back like that. And then this is the problem. Then they realize they take out the Ark of the Covenant now. You take the, and then you take and send it away to Gaff. Send it away to Akron. Send it to Ashdod. And then they will send it back again to Israel, Israel to Beth Shemesh. Right? But they still worship their God. My brother and my sister, if you want to see the power of the presence of God, I challenge you this morning. Let us remove their God and bring the Ark of the Covenant on top. Amen. Can we do that? Come on. Hallelujah. Carry, carry the Ark. Put the ark on top, hallelujah, amen. And then take the dragon down, and then, and then move, move, <laughs> exit, exit, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> hallelujah. And I'm declaring in the destiny empowered Christian church only Jesus Christ that we lift up on high. Only His name that we glorify. Come on, let us all stand and glorify the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.